Hey, hi, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to Town Hall uh, Film and Video. I'm Lisa Gold, I'm the Executive Director of A4, and I'm really excited to have you all joining us here tonight. Um, huge, huge thanks to our friends here at Brick for hosting this Town Hall. Um, we're going to show a little bit about Brick first, and then I'll launch into my spiel. But let me play this for you first. Now I would like to introduce Fred Brown uh, to talk a little bit about Brick. Fred is the supervising producer of Brick TV. So I'm going to hand it over to our friend Fred here. Hello and welcome. How is everyone? Good. Good, good. Welcome to Brick in a place that we call Brick House. We mean that literally. This is a creative space for everyone and we want to make sure that you belong. I'm also the diversity, equity, inclusion liaison here. So we want to thank Lisa um, and your team for bringing the Alliance <coughs> to this building and to our organization. Just to get a little lay of the land here, how many people have been inside of this building? Okay. And how many people have been to a brick event either in the field or somewhere in the building. All right, well visit our website because this is uh, New York City's, one of New York City's largest, one of the country's largest community access facilities. The space you're sitting right in now is available for our community producers who can get certified in a number of different classes at little or no cost and like you can have access to all of our varying production resources. I'll give you a brief summary of the organization for those people who do not know who we are. For 40 years, we've been the leading arts and media institution anchored in downtown Brooklyn, whose work spans contemporary visual performing arts media, which you saw here, the civil, um, sizzle reel was created by our Brick TV production team, Emmy Award winning, by the way, and Civic Action. And so for 40 years, the institution has been shaped Brooklyn's cultural and media landscape by presenting and including artists, creators, students, and media makers. As a creative catalyst for our community, we ignite learning in people of all ages and um, centralized diversity of voices that take risk and drive culture forward. Brick builds 
a creative future. And you're a part of that future. So welcome, please go on our website, check out the resources that we have available. We also have labs for creative and just fun stuff. There's a bunch of free concerts that are happening at Prospect Park now, so don't miss out on that. And by all means, come back. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, they do so much here. Seriously, there, there's a podcast studio if you want to learn video production, if you want to go to a concert. They have great exhibitions. They have like poetry slams. There's all sorts of amazing things that happen here. So I encourage you all to come back. Um, all right, so in that spirit, who, who's been to town hall before? Who's been to a town hall before? Okay, good. It's a good, good, it's a good mix. Um, so those of you who are familiar with A4 and Town Hall, you know that the Asian American Arts Alliance is a 40-year-old nonprofit service organization whose mission is to ensure greater representation, equity, and opportunities for Asian American Pacific Islander artists and arts organizations. And we do that through a lot of different programs, um, professional development, resource sharing, um, community building, all sorts of things. Um, but Town Hall is one of our signature programs that does everything. It brings people together, it creates a sense of community, it gives a platform for artists to talk, to meet each other, um, to spur new ideas and partnerships. It's one of our favorite events. It's been happening for 10 years. It happens every other month. Um, and this one, this our, our film and video, is like one of the most popular events. So we hope um, you have a great time tonight. I'm sure you will. Um, I'm gonna share just a few protocols before we get started. Um, one, we are recording this event, so we uh, post it online afterwards if you want to relive this great experience um, or share it with others who couldn't make it tonight. Uh, I ask that you silence your phones, please, so that you don't interrupt anybody while they're giving their pitch. Um, in case you're in need, there are restrooms. Uh, you go out the door to the left and then to the left, and they're right down the hall there. It'll be on your right-hand side there. If you need Wi-Fi, because you are sharing this on social media because you're having so much fun. Um, the info is brick-guest, and um, there you go. The password is um, brick2day, capital D-A-Y. There you go. Um, we need some better tape here. Okay, so here's how um, tonight is going to go for those of you who haven't been here before to a town hall or for those of you who forgot how it works. Um, we have two featured presenters, and then two groups of uh, short pitches, which are each two minutes in length. Those are people that have signed up in advance. Um, so we'll do the first featured presenter and then people will go in order. Um, and I will, oops, okay. <laughs> um, and then I will sit here in the front seat with my phone and an alarm. So you will know when your two minutes is up. So we will um, we'll have a list here of all the people that are going in the order, um, and I'll call your names anyway, so everybody will know what their turn is, and just we ask that you be ready to go um, once we call your name. And then after everybody has gone, after both of our feature presenters have gone, after our two-minute registered pitchers have gone, um, we will open up the floor to or open the mic up. Uh, to people who want to give a brief 30-second pitch. So what you will ask you to do is to fill out your name and your Instagram handle or website or email or some way that people can follow up with you. Um, if they want to know more about your project, and you have 30 seconds, and you'll go in order of that. So put your name here and then line up over here, and we'll go in order, um, and I will time you for 30 seconds on that as well. Um, Okay, so I said that um, we are recording and we're going to post this on our YouTube channel. Um, if you want to share anything tonight on social, you can tag us at A4 Town Hall. Um, and we will also have a, a very, very, very brief survey that we would like for you to fill out at the end of this event. It really helps us, us to get ideas like, who would you like to... I don't know, what kind of events are you interested in? Who would you, what, what should our next town hall be? What kind of workshops do you need? What's your biggest issue that A4 can help you solve? So we just want your feedback on those things and also like how can we make this event better? Um, like we started this doing one minute pitches and people thought that wasn't enough time. So we doubled it to two minutes. <laughs> so we actually do listen to you and we want to know what you think and how we can make events and programs better for you. So please um, just take a minute. Literally, it's so fast. It's only like five questions. So we really appreciate you filling it out. There's a QR code. There are QR codes all over the place. Um, so we um, appreciate that. Um, and also we will, if you've registered in advance with your email address, we will share the slideshow with you at the um, after the event tomorrow, so you don't have to worry about taking notes or 
all that kind of stuff. If you want to, you can. Um, I just want to share a few upcoming events that we have. Um, there are seats, uh, there are two seats here. There's a seat over here in the front if anybody is interested. Excuse Maka there. Um, so on Thursday, this Thursday, uh, August 1st, our friends at Asian Cinevision are opening the 47th uh, Asian American International Film Festival at the Asia Society with a documentary screening, a performance, and a Q&A with uh, Nobuko Miyamoto, who is a legend, um, part of Basement Workshop. She wrote a book called Not Your Butterfly. She um, a legend, and I encourage you to attend. Um, A4 is a community partner with Asian Cinevision, and we're supporting the shorts program at, on Friday, August 2nd uh, at 6 p.m., so we're going to ask you to join us at Regal Union Square Theaters to check out the short films, one of which you will hear about tonight, um, and you can meet, meet the filmmakers, one of whom you will meet tonight. Um, so, And also, with, as a friend of A4, you can get a special 20% uh, off any ticket with this code AIFF47 underscore A4. Um, and then on Tuesday, August 13th, we're hosting a mixer with our friends at Saucy, um, the South Asian Women's Creative Collective, at Finback Brewery in Brooklyn. They have very, very tasty beer. So if you are a South Asian women identifying creator or you want to meet one, uh, come join us for our beer snacks conversation. Uh, and then on Monday, it's free, by the way, and we have like um, three beers for the first, I don't know, 20, 30 sign ups? No? Okay, yeah, and there'll be snacks. Yeah, first 30 people who show up get free beer. So, um, yeah, it's fun. And then on Monday, August 19th, um, it marks the return of our incredibly popular New Music Monday series at Bang & Olufsen in Soho. This is um, a series that we started in partnership with Bang & Olufsen that allows artists to hear their work on state-of-the-art speakers in a very intimate, comfortable setting. Um, but this time, we're switching it up a little bit, and we um, it's, it's usually only five uh, artists at a time, so you sit, you listen to your original music, you get feedback from other people, you can take notes, you don't have to listen to it in your little headphones, you can hear it in this beautiful room. Um, but this time we're, we're reserving the slot specifically for AAPI film, film and TV artists. So if you're a film scorer um, or whatever, you have a film that you made, you want to hear it through awesome speakers, uh, you can sign up for that. So it's um, the slots are very, they go very quickly. So um, we have a, a drawing, so you sign up before August 9th, and we'll randomly pick five names. Um, but sign up, it's a really, really great event. Uh, and then on Friday, August 30th, we are going to be presenting with our friends at Bryant Park, uh, Vijay Ayer in concert with his trio. Um, he's going to be joined by um, the bassist Devon Gates and drummer Jeremy Dutton. So. I don't know how many of you are in love with VJ like I am. He is such a fantastic musician, and it's free, and it'll be outside in Bryant Park, so we encourage you to join us for that. Um, and then a, a little special sneak announcement, because uh, it's not yet public yet. You're the first to hear it. On Saturday, September 28th, we're presenting an afternoon of short films at the Metrograph. So we have, um, uh, they're another good friend, partner of ours. We have a lot of great partnerships, like our friends at Brick, our friends at Metrograph. Um, so we will share more details of that very, very soon. So if you're not signed up for our newsletter, you should. So you'll get the, the info um, first. And let's see. Oh, yeah, so there's that. And then um, finally, um, very excited to share a, a super fun event this fall called Costumes and Cocktails. It is a fundraiser, but it's a costume party with a little twist. So it's October 15th um, at uh, the Georgia Room at the Freehand Hotel. And we're going to have a, a DJ. We'll have an open bar with special cocktails by Yobu Soju. We have snacks from Jeepney. And we will have a silent auction featuring costumes and masks made by artists like Perry Young. You haven't done Perry Young from Warrior makes flutes and he's collaborating with um, a costume designer to make a corset out of bamboo so and we have um warren warren king made this incredible mask um amanda thing podibakia tamia right so we have all these great artists that are making costumes and masks if you don't feel like making your own for halloween plus this year we are going to have a fashion show so it's going to be really fun so we have um all sorts of fantastic artists dewang sublima Telfar, um, who are 
sharing items with us. So 50% of the proceeds from all of the sale of these silent auctions goes to the artists, and the other half goes to us to be able to present more free programs like this. So it's a really fun event. Um, tickets are on sale now, so come join us if you want. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Like I said, super fun event. Um, oh, and then we have early bird tickets now. Tickets go up to $175 after September 16th, so get them now, tell your friends now. Um, and then also, um, check out the AMP. So I don't know if, if you all have seen the AMP. We do a lot of features around film, filmmakers. Um, so it's our online magazine. It was launched in November of 2022, and it uplifts AAPI creative voices. Um, we commission photo essays, there are reviews, there's like some interviews. Um, it's, it's a great, we publish new content every week, so check it out. Um, and then finally, a uh, friendly reminder to share your work with us. Um, we have a website, obviously, uh, but we have a free community calendar, and it's free to post your events. We use the listings on the calendar to include in our newsletter, which goes out every other week. So sign up for that, post your events there, let us know what's happening, um, screenings, talks, whatever. Um, and then, like I said, sign up for our newsletter if you haven't already, so you're the first to know of all this stuff. Um, okay, so I want to thank all of our um, incredible staff, um, Justine and Danny and everyone, um, Leo over here, Stephanie, who has made this event possible on the A4 side, my dog Maka, um, and of course to our supporters at Con Edison, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, in partnership with the City Council, uh, the New York State Council on the Arts with the support of Governor Kathy Hochul and the New York State Legislature, uh, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Howard Gilman Foundation, the Ford Foundation, and many, many generous individuals, just like you, um, who make our events possible. So thank you for that. Um, and then also, okay, so before before I dive in, I just want to um, offer a brief land acknowledgement because we do acknowledge that the land politically design designated as New York City uh, to be the homeland of the Lenape uh, Canarsi peoples, Lenape Hoking, who were violently displaced as a result of European settler colonialism over the course of 400 years. Um, the Lenape are diasporic people who remain closely connected with this land and are its rightful stewards. So as an organization that focuses on the rights of underrepresented peoples and in solidarity with indigenous people, we recognize this history and uplift the sovereignty of indigenous peoples and territory. And we commit to dismantling ongoing settler colonial practices and their implications in our world. So with that, I would like to introduce our first featured presenter, Nick Hartanto. Nick is uh, an Indonesian American filmmaker based in New York. His short film, The Dishwasher, which he co-directed, was awarded a special jury mention um, at Tribeca in 2019 and then was acquired by HBO Max. His next film, Atrophy, a genre-bending story about his mother's fight to recover from a stroke, premiered at Fantasia in 2020, uh, Fantasia 2021 and toured the genre festival circuit, winning Best Performance at Brooklyn Horror and North Bend Film Festivals. Um, Nick is also a skilled cinematographer with commercial credits or commercial clients, including Condé Nast Traveler, Netflix, 538, and Whedon and Kennedy. Uh, he just completed his new short film, Daily City, which will debut at the Asian American International Film Festival this Friday, August 2nd. So I'll give you Nick to talk a little bit more about that. Hey, everyone. Uh, so, uh, a large part of filmmaking uh, for me is uh, about problem solving. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you all tonight about uh, some of the major obstacles that we had to overcome uh, in order to make uh, my new film, Daily City. Um, when I was uh, a young boy, uh, I was obsessed with drawing comic books. Um, I was a latchkey kid. Uh, I spent uh, hours every day after school just drawing. Um, you know, by the time I was in middle school, I probably killed an entire rainforest. Um, but as an adult, when I look back at this kind of entire universe of superheroes that I created, um, I realized that they were all white. And, uh, you know, I was a child of the 90s, um, and I felt like all the media that I had consumed, uh, you know, on TV and movies and books, um, kind of created this uh, almost white default in my mind. Um, 
and I quite literally couldn't see uh, myself uh, as the hero of my own stories. And so, you know, I really wanted to change that with this film. Uh, and I wanted to represent my culture um, and my experiences, uh, specifically as an Indonesian American in this country. Um, so I just want to start off by showing a sequence uh, from the film uh, that I think is uh, really representative of that goal. So one of the first major obstacles that we had to, oh, thank you. Uh, like I was saying, one of the major obstacles that we had to overcome right from the get-go uh, was finding our Indonesian cast. Um, to this day, I probably only know around like five like working Indonesian American actors in this country. Um, I've casted some of my own films before. Uh, but I knew that I would need a lot of help with this one. Um, so I reached out to some contacts at Tribeca Studios and they uh, recommended someone they'd worked with before, um, a Filipino casting director based in LA named Christian Bustamante, who had a lot of experience uh, finding Southeast Asian talent. Um, so he read the script, he liked it, and we got to work right away. Um, and so his big strategy uh, right from the get-go was uh, we need, because we're mainly gonna look for non-actors, um, he said we needed to spread the word through the entire Indonesian community um, across the entire country. And so I began, uh, you know, reaching out to like um, traditional Indonesian dance groups, uh, Indonesian like gamelan music groups. Uh, I reached out to Indonesian consulates and asked them to uh, blast our casting flyer on social media. And Christian was like literally on the ground in LA, just like street casting. Uh, and he, he was literally attending um, Indonesian church events, uh, uh, Indonesian like uh, cultural festivals. Uh, and he, he even went to a Cape uh, short, film, a short film screening block uh, in which one of his films was a part of it. And he asked the director if he could go on stage and, for the Q&A and he literally just asked the audience. He said, does anyone know any Indonesians who want to act, you know, like, and, and fit like this criteria, you know, come see me afterwards. And lo and behold, um, this young woman approached him afterwards and said, you have to meet my little brother. And that ended up being Jet, uh, our, our 11 year old lead actor. Um, could you play the casting video? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so here's kind of a, a few of their auditions, but, we spent um, we spent basically over four months looking for our cast, um, and I thought it was uh, really well worth you know all the effort. Um, and mm, it's fine. It's fine. Can you make that yeah. No worries. So yeah, uh, it was. It ended up being like the whole casting process ended up being a very like special and very kind of like rare experience uh, for I'd say me and and for the the people auditioning. Um, it was it was it was really cool to like meet all these Indonesians from all walks of life, um, and to give them the opportunity in a way to play a leading role in a movie, 
and and honestly like to just hear dialogue that was like spoken in our language um, so the next major obstacle that we had to overcome and this is something that like uh, every production has to face is uh, kind of finding and assembling all your crew members um, and I had an added challenge that I wanted to place on us that I really wanted to find uh, like a majority uh, crew of Asian American artists. Um, so sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted I want the crew to basically be people who could actually understand the nuances within the script. Um, and that required us uh, to find a lot of Bay Area Asian American artists because uh, that's where we were shooting. Uh, a lot of artists who had very little to almost no experience working on a film set and it was really us giving them like an opportunity to become like department heads uh, on a crew for the very first time obviously that comes with like a certain amount of risk uh, and um, you know certainly a lot of us had to wear a few more hats than we normally do um, but uh, it was I, th I was really adamant about uh, finding um, artists who you know could understand what it's to be what it is to be an Asian American in the Bay Area you know uh, how to do our hair how to do our makeup how to dress us uh, you know how to decorate like a working-class uh, Asian immigrant home you know and and I found all these people who like really loved the details you know um, like my makeup artist uh, told me that one of her favorite things is seeing a movie where an Asian family takes their shoes off before entering the home you know it brings her so much joy and she loved that part in the script. And like for me, uh, I get so much pleasure just seeing our Indonesian actors eating with their hands at the dinner table. You know, it's such an Indonesian thing to do. Um, and so you could find someone who wasn't Asian, maybe someone who has a ton more experience working uh, on a crew um, who can do like a, a lot of research. Um, but I thought it was so much more profound to, you know, give that opportunity to an Asian American artist who might not uh, normally get to explore that side of themselves on a film set. And you could just really see all the love and care that they put into the work, um, into like a story that they could see themselves in uh, that reflected uh, their own uh, lived experiences. Um, and a lot of the crew members told me that the deeper themes within the script uh, really resonated with them. Like they could actually understand like what it is to be a a model minority, you know, uh, uh, what it feels like to be exotified, uh, um, the feeling of microaggressions. Um, uh, can you put up the crew photo? And so the, here's a here's a photo uh, collage of our uh, of the majority of our Asian American crew. Um, a lot of them based in the Bay Area. Um, and I'll just finish by saying uh, that. I had this like special memory, uh, like shortly after we wrapped, uh, Jet, our 11-year-old uh, uh, actor, um, he came up to me and he asked me to take my glasses off. Uh, then he asked me to take like my baseball cap off, and he just like kind of stood there for a while, uh, just like observing my face. And and I don't know, I I'd like to think that maybe he saw some of himself in me. I certainly saw a lot of myself in him. And I think it's just so powerful um, to see someone who looks like you in a position of leadership, in a position of power. Um, and, you know, unlike when I was his age, uh, I really hope that, um, you know, Jet is able to see himself uh, as the hero of his own stories. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nick. That was great. Um, so you want to check out Nick, learn more about him, you can uh, hit that QR code. All right. So um, next up are um, the people who pre-registered for two-minute pitches. So we will start with um, Tian, K.Y. Wu, uh, Timothy Sarmiento, uh, Stephanos Tai, Ayo, um, Ayo, sorry, Ayo, um, Melinda Chu, and Georges Bridges. So in that order. Um, we'll start with Tian. Um, so I will, once you get up here, I will start the timer. So. All right. Um, thank you, A4, for this great 
opportunity tonight. And, um, and thank you, Nick, for kicking off the event by talking about obstacles. And that will be the theme of my presentation. So please uh, play the slide, please. What are you doing here? Yeah, you can crawl out of your record player to help me. Um, thank you guys, and it's a pleasure to be here with so many filmmakers tonight. Um, so I think you all kind of understand the challenge of film distribution. So making a financial return on our indie films, especially short films, is incredibly challenging. To address this, the Brooklyn Filmmakers Collective launched a YouTube channel to distribute our films independently with the goal of monetizing our films and building a strong audience community. So the Brooklyn Filmmakers Collective is a volunteer run, a filmmakers run volunteer organization offering mutual support. Founded in 2007, our members films have premiered in prestigious film festivals around the world. And excitedly to announce Tomorrow, we're gonna release the first issue of our newsletter featuring our filmmaker um, interviews. Oh, it's down, okay. All right, cool. Thank you. So find me after the event and you can get all the information about our channel. Thank you. Hey guys, um, my name is KY. I'm a uh, writer director uh, I just wrote this uh, feature film. It's called uh, The Black Chapel. It's a psychological horror film. Uh, I'm shooting in a few months. And I just wanted to share some concept art. Have you ever felt the type of trauma that forces you to decide to rebuild your life or die trying? At first, you run, because it's the only way to feel safe again. But when the darkness seeps out from the depths of your psyche, the monsters no longer hide in the shadows. So you turn to face them, cautiously at first, then boldly. The Black Chapel is a feature film set in New York City and in a dark forest. It examines the personal journey of a hero character as he grapples with the horror and salvation of love. The hero is transported to a mythical forest where he must wage battle against his own ego to figure out how to believe in himself the way others believe in him. It's the only way he can return home. This is the horror by, um, written and directed by Tim Sarmiento. Avalon, an early 30-something Asian-American film producer, Avalon's been producing a vampire film for the last few months out in Cuba. 
Avalon gets in the cab, it's quiet, the sound of bumpy road, and the image of winding overpasses, exhaustion, New York City, home. Avalon gets home, and it looks like someone's just moved in. Well, it's her, she's moved in. <laughs> Soon enough, she's ready, and she's out on the street, dressed to the nines. She enters a crowded party, where suddenly she's inundated with questions. Avalon is some kind of community leader, a uh, sort of big shot, type A, always on kind of girl, a sharp contrast to the previous images. <coughs> Internally, Avalon's a mess. We get a sense of who she is through, through the people she meets at this industry party. She's got a sprawling group of friends, a mix between the well-to-do and the working class. Maybe the most important person she meets there is Claude, a significantly younger white man who we learn is a sex worker. Claude's a downtown type, young, privileged, and a micro-celebrity. Evelyn sinks back into her routine. Bodies, work and play intertwine, misplaced desire. We enter a trance meditative state. We feel for Avalon. She can't get her needs met. In this perspective heavy film, we descend with her until Claude. Some of my influences for this project include the Piano Teacher by Mikhail Haneke, and Like Someone in Love by Abbas Kiarostami. The Horror is a cold short film of stark contrast. It explores obsession, embarrassment, and shame, and how they call us with our desires. It's a provocative, transgressive, and darkly funny story. It was conceived as a proof of concept for my ambitious feature, No Goodbye, No Hello, and as part of my ongoing series, My Heart Can Only Take So Much. With this project, I want to talk about relationship power dynamics within our industry, tell a story about differences in class, show descendant to obsession, and demonstrate how those in power really don't know. <laughs> I want to show renewal and sex work together as reasonable beings, and also meditate on shame. I want to paint my version of New York City through my lens, th through this 24-page short film. That's the horror. Hi everyone, um, my name is Stefanos Tai. Um, I don't have anything that I brought, but I have a story that I really want to tell. Um, so back in 2016, my grandma had Alzheimer's um, and I visited her and somehow she started to believe that she was a young woman again. And she started to think that I was her boyfriend from her youth. And I wanted to tell her the truth and I tried, um, but it was, impossible you know she was convinced and I eventually realized that it would be kinder for me to just act and play along as this person um, and the result was I like to say you know it's an exaggeration a bit but there were moments where I felt like she was falling in love with me actually and it was bizarre and ridiculous and sweet and very heartbreaking um, but it taught me something that I want to capture and that I want to share with the feature film I'm working on which was that, um, you know, when we lose our memories, we like to think that we've lost ourselves. But what I saw with my grandma was that there's a connection that we've earned with the people we love that is on another plane. It's in the body, you know, it's a muscle memory. And that outlasts all the disease progression. Mm -hmm. I want to tell that story because the world is aging very fast. Um, with all the stuff that's been happening in the election, I'm sure we've all taking a moment to think about what old age means, um, how we can age with dignity, um, why can't we celebrate life's endings the way we do its beginnings. Um, I also think there's cultural angles on this, you know, Asian American views towards aging, filial piety, respect for elders, these are very different than maybe more traditional American views. Um, so that's my story, I want to tell it, and I'm just looking for anyone who um, is like-minded and, and thinks that it's important. So. If you want to chat more, I'll be here. Um, thanks. Hey, everybody. Uh, I get really nervous. I'm just going to read my script. I'm Ao, um, and I'm here to tell you about the Silent Unseen audio tour, an embodied introduction to Asian American history which is an audio tour that begins in Flushing Meadows Park and moves through the Queens Museum. Next, please. The audio tour traces the history of Asian immigration in relation to um, larger systemic points of racism, 
with the intention to offer easily accessible education that centers building solidarity within and beyond Asian American communities. Next, please. It attempts to move beyond the moniker Stop Asian Hate into a more in-depth understanding of how racism shows up for Asian folks to deconstruct the model minority myth and to use that knowledge to sponsor racial solidarity. Next, please. It includes some stories and some quotes from some excellent special guests, Betty Yu, Grace M. Cho, Helen Kyung Kyung Park, Helen Ziva, and Julman Tolentino. Next slide, please. I created the tour through a fellowship with More Art, a small public art organization in New York. The Queens Museum has expressed interest, but has not yet been able to commit to promotion or presentation of the project, but it is up and running as a public art project. So I'm relying entirely on community organizations and people like you to get the word out. Next slide, please. Um, we have some group tours coming up in August and July. The ticket sales will help sponsor an upcoming panel in the fall with myself, Grace M. Cho, the author of Taste Like War, Fei Huan from Queen's Memory Podcast, our major minor voices. So next slide. If you go to the website, you can learn more about how to take the tour with a group. You can take it by yourself, just with your um, phone and your headphones, totally free. And you can also take it remotely. Um, I also have some cards here to distribute, and I'd love for them to disappear tonight. I have a much larger stack. Um, I will say, I recently went on it with a friend, and she said to me, this is what I want all my white friends to do before I'm friends with them. <laughs> so if you have white friends with like that, take some cards. Don't be afraid to pass them around. So thanks so much. Melinda here? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hi. Okay. Hi, I'm Melinda Chu. I'm one of the founders of the Asian Women Giving Circle. We've been around for 19 years and we, we fund arts and activism projects do, um, created by Asian American women and gender expansive uh, artists in New York City. And um, our group was big. The way we fund is is based on a Korean giving gay. So what they do is uh, people put in uh, a little mo the same amount of money into a pool and they give it to one person every time. And so immigrant uh, immigrant groups have done this for years because they don't have banking. So you could you know they've used it for businesses, but the founder of our group did it for shopping and for shoes. Mm. So um, we give usually we give around ten grants of $8,000 every year. So we raise about $80,000 every year. We've been doing this for 19 years. And um, let's see, uh, we, we pay for films, uh, narrative shorts, documentaries, uh, books, webisodes, seminars, videos, you know, anything, performing arts, anything, you know, that has a social justice angle. And we decide by voting on it. And everybody who donates money, whether it's $5 or $5,000, you get one vote. And it's better than the Electoral College. <laughs> so like, so like, if you give, you can actually vote, um, unless you're applying for it. So that's a different story. Um, and you know, we've, uh, so for films and, and, and television, you know, we can only give, you know, those projects cost so much, but sometimes, you know, it comes at the right amount, t right time. So we funded um, f the documentary Free Cho Su Lee on PBS. So they got it, I guess, the $8,000 at the exact time that they needed to do some editing. So you never know. And so we're always happy to contribute. Um, oh, okay. So sign up for the newsletter to get updates for when the RFP and application goes out. It'll come out in January. Uh, you, pl you can finish and apply in March, and then we tell everybody in May. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melinda. Um, Georges? Francis Chen and I'm George's Bridges and we're from the Asian American Film. Hi, I'm George's Bridges and this is my colleague 
Francis Chen, and we're from the Asian American Film Lab. We promote ethnic and gender diversity in the film industry. He'll tell you about one of our programs, and I'll tell you about another program. Hi, um, I'm, I'm the coordinator for the 72 Hour Film Shootout. Um, it's a filmmaking competition where you make uh, five minute films in 72 hours. Um, if you're interested, it's too late. We already have all you <laughs> but, uh, but you can see the winners um, at the Asian American Film Inter International Film Festival this week, uh, this week coming up uh, on, on a video demand. Uh, if you're interested in seeing some filmmakers, um, our, we, our award ceremony was on Saturday. Uh, if you see me after there, I have a advice that even you can win um, a free membership to Backstage.com. So um, uh, I look forward to, uh, to seeing you uh, uh, online and on, uh, on, the week, on, on the film festival. Hi, and I'd like to talk about Unfinished Works, which is one of our oldest programs. Mm -hmm. If you have any type of written work that you'd like to get some feedback on, uh, if you're selected, uh, we can provide a space for you to uh, get some type of feedback from your work. We have three events coming up, uh, October, September 19th, October 17th, and November 14th at 20 Cooper Square uh, from 5 to 7. So you can come and um, find out if, uh, if you'd like to participate or how you can help out. Thank you. Once again, yeah, see me afterwards if you want to have this, the um, information about the film festival and the, uh, the code for Backstage.com. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, this is quite something. Thank you. I just, my name is Katha Cato. I'm a 67-year-old white woman that I would like for you to think possibly maybe we could meet in Queens and we could go to the installation and then maybe we could become friends. <laughs> Um, we, I, I run the Queens World Film Festival, we turned 15, we've screened 1,975 films, 179 of them are from Brooklyn, we have screened films from 98 nations, uh, representing every continent, we've screened films from Indonesia, Nepal, the Philippines, Vietnam, China, Japan, and many, many others. But what we do that I'm the most proud of is something called the Listening Tour, where we pull people together to talk about hope and resilience. And uh, we ask people um, to understand I'm not really interested in people who look like me to be sharing their opinions. As you know, you don't really need to ask me for my opinion. I'll just bust in and tell you. So uh, we're looking for unheard voices, people who would like to participate. We're going to uh, play a minute and a half. Cathacato at gmail.com. Uh, there's no fee. You can do it in any language. You can bring anybody that you'd want or we'll come to you. So just take a, a look at just one of the 47 segments of the listening tour that we've done so far, and they're all archived at the Queen's Memory Project. Thank you. Uh, in August of 2023, Queen's World Film Festival had the opportunity to meet uh, some extraordinary individuals who stutter. Stuttering is a neurological speech difference that about 1% of the population experiences. There we go. <laughs> I told you you didn't I need to ask. I hope by moving forward in, in life, facing difficulty of times well, hope is a gift. Hope it is a belief of trust in yourself and others recognizing the true power of the universe and its creation. A calling of who you're made to be resembles hope. I define hope as... Sh I define hope sh by moving forward in, in life, facing difficulty of times in well. Yourself and in hope is a good. That you wish to, to hope become. is a belief of trust in yourself and others. Out of respect for our true. Segment. I define hope. You can find us at queensworldfilmfestival.org. Uh, if we had longer, I would have left us all to be uncomfortable as we sorted ourselves through that and didn't do this to find a better way to listen. So I invite you to the queensworldfilmfestival.org website listening tour and take a look at 47 different segments of people that it's our joy to bring forward. So we hope to see you in Queens.
next up, Laria. Great. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between and outside of it. Um, my name is Larry. Um, I'm an Indonesian graphic designer and filmmaker uh, based here in New York City, and I'm here to pitch my idea for a documentary called English. It's a documentary about Asian English accents, obviously. Um, next, please. Oops. And um, so the background of this is just that I got high one time, all right? And then, uh, please do not laugh, I only got two minutes left. And it all started when I got high and watched white dudes do action accents on YouTube. It's this rabbit hole, and I thought to myself, this guy got 15 million views on YouTube, and when I start speaking like my father, I'm perpetuating stereotypes. Funny. And next, please. Which reminded me of the time where I went to theater school and I couldn't learn any Asian accents because there were literally no resources. And I thought to myself, let's make one. Let's, let's learn what Asian accents is. And next, please. And it's, uh, for me, it's a cerebral, emotionally driven exploration of Asian English accents. We, I want to explore what's the shame and joy and grief around it. Well, uh, like my history with Asian English accents was, was pretty complicated as well with my family keep telling me to keep speaking perfect English growing up. And I kind of want to explore that socially and linguistically. Next, please. So basically, I just need, I need producers. <laughs> I need people to talk with me. It's good to walk with me, all right? Um, so if you are interested, I'm here. I'm, I'm the guy with the uh, green shirt and everything. And if you're not interested, please also talk to me. I'm very lonely and I need more Asian friends. <laughs> Bye. Okay, um, next up is Hint. Hi, are you gonna? Okay, cool. Uh, that's a part of my showreel that's gonna play in the background. It's my personal work, not my commercial showreel. Hi, I'm Hind, um, Hind Chufani. I'm a Palestinian filmmaker. Um, I grew up in the Arab world, but I'm now living in Brooklyn. Um, my work is at the intersection of poetry, feminism, and politics, a lot of politics and some sexuality, but not from not today. Um, <laughs> I am working on a few projects, actually. I have a feature from Galilee, sort of northern Israel to you, northern historic Palestine to me. Uh, I come from Nazareth. My mother is from Nazareth, where Jesus is from. We're Christian Palestinians. And even though I'm an atheist, I'm working on a project about the so-called minorities in Israel uh, the indigenous Palestinians who have been there for a long time. So I'm working on that, especially now with the genocide having broken out. I think we need to go and retell again and again the story of people who are inside the country um, and facing existential threats, even though they're not in the West Bank or Gaza. The project of my life, though, is not that. These are some of the scenes from Palestine, actually, from my project. Um, the project of my life is actually I've been filming for about 13 years, uh, four female Arab poets, Lebanese, Palestinian, all working in English, uh, across about 12 cities. And uh, the idea is to kind of create the first um, English speaking mostly, but Arab, Arab American TV show where there's four women who are badass, who are very different women, talented, and to kind of trace their um, economic migration, their exile, the bombings in Lebanon, the censorship of Dubai, the problems of you know misogyny in Jordan, the issues in London, like you follow them through their lives. And I've been filming this for 13 years and I think now I'm ready to find a producer. To, <laughs> and if anyone has like a couple of hundred thousand dollars, that would be very helpful <laughs> for the edit. Um, yeah, so this is some of my personal work. I'm now in Brooklyn and very easily uh, findable online. Am I done? Uh, a couple more seconds. I, You're kidding I, me. I, 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 I normally stuff. ramble so I much. Know, I, I, <laughs> I got a bit more time, okay. Uh, Thanks. Um, I'm also a poet, a performance, not a performance in the sense of like theatrical, but just a spoken word um, poet and writer, which sounds more douchey than it actually is. But um, <laughs> and uh, I, um, I don't know what to tell you. It's I'm very um, one of my poems was published by the Asian Arab uh, Asian American um, Writers Workshop lately, which was very, very nice for me. They had a series on Palestinian poets. And uh, I'm kind of new in Brooklyn, not that new. I lived here 20 years ago when I went to NYU for, for my, my master's. But I have lived in the Arab world since then, so I'm kind of new in Brooklyn. And uh, very happy to see your beautiful faces. Thank you.
Thank you. To me? Coming. So, a brief first. Hey, everyone. I'm Demi Guo. I come from Flushing, Queens, and I've been working on a documentary about Kung Fu in New York City for the last eight years. Mm. We are currently looking for money. Please help us finish this film. It's been eight years. Um, we are telling the stories of people who brought Kung Fu to New York City and influenced basically everything you know about martial arts or self-defense. So these are the people who influenced Shang-Chi, Revenge of the Green Dragons, a lot of Hollywood stuff going on, and helped defend the community against anti-Asian hate via self-defense when everything spiked in 2021 and went to shit. So uh, definitely check us out and yeah. Can you play the trailer? Wow, this is our school here. Our here in the, in the early 80s. Until now, we're still running different classes in here. Not walk to school. We're going to walk down to the little Chinatown, our bus wash. I'll be passing around postcards with our social media and website. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Josephine Thornswad. I am a director and producer based here in Brooklyn. I'd like to talk to you today about Grand Super Buffet, a film I wrote and directed. I'm looking for film festival submissions leads for the film. It is done, and it's an exploration of community, coming of age, and how we find ourselves in relationships, all set within the context of a Chinese buffet. The story. So after their first semester of college, Alex and Jason, two queer Asian American men, come home to reconnect at their favorite Chinese buffet. But after an awkward encounter, the two friends question each other's way of being Asian and their motivations for coming to Grand Super Buffet. I'll play you a little teaser clip here that explores some of the tensions that erupt that night. Do you have the, uh, the clip queued up? Who eats octopus? It's so gross. Oh. And what's this, an octopus? <laughs> what does that even mean? Why'd they come all the way out here? Who cares? These chopsticks are so shitty. Dude, you are so white. <laughs> right. So, Grand Super Buffet so far has been a finalist at two Academy qualifying festivals, and I am still seeking the world premiere. So if you have any ideas about what festivals I can submit to, or even creative screening ideas, please let me know. Thank you so much. And by the way, I do have a film at the Asian American International Film Festival, my 4,500 hexagons. Can talk to you about that later as well. Thank you. John? What up, Brooklyn? Uh, love all your projects. Um, 
So I found something super cringy I had to show you guys. Uh, this, this is me in first grade when I declared I was going to be a filmmaker. Um, so I thought I was also old enough to be like, I'm going to write an autobiography. Um, I made a table of contents. I was a fan of Jaws. I got to chapter one, getting started, and I just like left it blank. <laughs> but um, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about tonight is like, you know, how do you get started? How do you like take something in your dreams that even though if you don't have any resources, you make it tangible in some way? Um, I didn't get to go to film school, but I did um, make three micro-budget features. I went completely like homeless, broke mode doing that, but I learned a lot. Um, these are supposed to be gifts, I don't know, uh, but you know, just imagine they're moving. I'm gonna like click around, all right, there we go. But um, basically after that, I was like, I'm still gonna make films like this, but um, I wrote a bunch of scripts that were maybe a little too provocative, too ambitious, and uh, you know, to attract the typical kind of industry financing. Um, so I decided, okay, I'm gonna like make them into these what I call like conceptual um, print artifacts, and just want to share one of them for you. This first one's a '90s crime saga. It's like an epic, sprawling thing that I wrote, um, and uh, has a sub narrative about bootleg movies. So I took all the research, the world building, the essays, the artwork I did, and crammed it into this like paper object that like unfolds in kind of a um, choose your own adventure way and it's disguised as like a, a VHS tape. Another one is like a psychedelic um, revenge story. Uh, the two studios I talked to they were like you're crazy to even think about making this. So I, I, this one's like broken down into court documents, crime scene reports, things like that. Um, and then this third one was inspired by a time I ran away from a family vacation. I uh, befriended this Rastafarian dude. And uh, so it's about um, uh, Chinese cooking and Caribbean music. And it's, it's, every, each scene is broken down in a um, uh, recipe, basically, a cookbook recipe. Um, sorry about the time, but basically I want to meet people to talk about how we can take our ideas further than just the screenplay and treatment format. Um, so reach out to me, um, say hello, thank you. Hi, hi everyone, um, my name is Radhika Agarwal. I'm a designer and analog filmmaker. Um, this is also the words I just said out loud. Um, I do short and experimental films, and each film is different, and for me it's kind of always tailored by meeting another creative and wanting to come up with something unique to both of our disciplines. Uh, primarily work with folks who are POC and queer. Um, this is just to show you a little bit about the process. All my films are edited by hand and shot by hand. Uh, it's a very tedious process, but very rewarding. And today I just wanted to show a clip from one of my films. So this is a film I screened at the MoMA in November. It's a collaboration between me and Emily Cartagena, who's a stunt double and performance artist. And in this film, uh, we kind of decided to create as much like a container for self-observation. Um, and kind of the themes we were exploring here were just understanding uh, what we project onto objects about ourselves and sort of how do we reclaim that back through movement. Um, so yeah. Well, that, um, that actually marks the end of all of our pre, whatever, our, our two minute pitches. Can we just get a round of applause for everybody's project? They're like really, really great and interesting project. Um, 
So two things. So now if anybody is so moved to talk about their own projects or wants to get up here, you can get 30 seconds in front of this crowd here. So just uh, come on up here. Justine's got the pen. You can put your name up here, put either an Instagram handle or something so we can follow up with you. And after you fill us out, you will, actually I think it's probably better if people stay over there. I don't know, actually because we're filming over there. So come over here. So put your name over there. You can walk behind here. And I will move this over here. So just, um, you can start over here and then just line up against the wall here and, okay. And who, and okay, Nadine is gonna start. So you all can um, stand over this way, like against the wall. Can you all line up that way? Sorry, it's a little tight in here tonight. We didn't have that many people. Okay. Um, and start lining up back here. Okay, and we're gonna try to keep it all moving at the same time. So you can get in line there, and then after you sign up, you can move back here. Okay, so we're gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna just try to keep it all moving at the same time. Okay. I'm going to give this to you, Nadine. You give me a second. Let me start the clock. You can stand up here, and then people, after they sign up, will move back this direction. Okay. So start with, um, when I say go, start <laughs> with your name. Okay. And then... Okay, hi, I'm Nadine. My nickname is Naughty. Um, this is not really a pitch, but it's just more of an introduction. It's my first A4 town hall. Um, I'm a documentary, mostly documentary producer, currently associate producing for A24, but um, I am also interested in scripted projects and I just want to work with more Asian AAPI filmmakers in general. So yeah, that's that. I'm also working on my first um, directorial debut called Seedling. Um, the log line is that it's a coming of age story about an elderly man, my father, um, and that's that. Thank you. Hi, my name is David Woon, and about two years ago, I did so much ketamine that I fell into a psychotic manic episode that lasted for a month. It was not the cutest moment, I um, was walking on the streets uh, late mornings. I was awake for weeks and basically pushed everybody away. My film is a documentary about the time that my friends got together to trick me into getting to the hospital. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Claudine. I'm with Oof Stories, we're an API documentary collective that tells stories that foster collective healing, that tells stories that make you go oof. Um, we actually did a Ford Gala video last year, so happy to be here. Right now we're working on a documentary film in post-production about you and me books in Chinatown, and it follows the story of Lucy as she processes her grief um, when her beloved bookstore is destroyed by fire. It's really about how community is necessary for our survival and about how the community pulls together to rebuild you and me. So talk to us. We're looking for fundraising and impact producers and everything. Thank you. Hi, guys. My name is Kayla. I'm with the Asian American International Film Festival, which is the first and longest running festival in the country for Asian diaspora storytellers. Uh, it's from August 1st to the 11th. As you might have heard, a few of the filmmakers here have films at the festival this year. So if you want to come out, connect with them, and also see films from like around the world, uh, you can talk to me after. Tickets are at AIFF.org. There's a lot of letters. I don't remember them all. But discount code, uh, A47 underscore AAAA for the, <laughs> for the A4 code. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Hello everyone, my name is Lux. I am an English Chinese bilingual writer, reporter, cinephile, and a feminist. I write about Asian diaspora, women's issues, grassroots artists, and mental health issues, among other topics. My last piece is about the Family Lens filmmaking workshop and how a young woman find healing through filmmaking. So I'm eager to make friends and hear your stories. Thank you. Hi, I'm C. Um, recently I've been working on a personal Cantonese interactive dictionary, and it's a way to document the anecdotes and stories that come with the words that I learned from my mom and dad. Um, it also preserves their voices in audio recordings, and I hope to publish it soon, and one day also make an open source version so that others can preserve their family languages as well. Um, if you're interested, please, yeah, reach out. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrea Louie, and I used to be on staff here at A4, so it's awesome to be back here with all of you. Thank you. I am now here with my new gig, which is the Serica Initiative, uh, which is a... It's been around for six years. No one's ever heard of it, so I'm here, I'm here to change that. Uh, we're here to uplift AAPI communities in part through narrative change. One awesome way that we're doing that is through a video series that we produce with WNET Public Radio, Public Television, and we have a launch event for our new series coming up on September 25th, and we'd love to have you all come out for that. In part, in, especially if there are any makers in the audience, we're going to have booths, so come see me if you'd like to present in any way. Thank you. Sick. Okay. I'm back. Uh, I'm Tim Sarmiento. Uh, I have 11 days remaining on a crowdfunding campaign for my new short film called Are You Depressed or Just a Cat? That's the name of the movie. There are uh, brown paper bags on the back table. There's like 44 banh mi's from Ba Zhu Yen. It's in Sunset Park. It's legit the best banh mi's in the city. Please grab them. Um, there's, I can't take them home. Um, and there's a QR code on there with, uh, with the crowdfunding campaign. So, you know, a little give and take. Hi, my name is Ewan. Um, this is not so much a pitch, but an offer. Um, I own a production company. We, we shoot and heavily post-produce. And we are always looking for interesting projects to collaborate with. And so if you um, are working on something in video and you've come across a problem, like maybe a shot that needs a lot of love, like needs some effects or graphics, or maybe it wasn't lit right, um, and it needs to be colored, um, or anything else, maybe graphics, some kind of effects, um, reach out to us and let us know. Maybe we can help you out. Hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Jason Simba. I'm executive director and founder of Festival of Cinema NYC. We're a 10-day film festival that focuses on truly independent film by filmmakers like you guys that put your blood, sweat, and tears into making them. Opening night is this Friday, and we have a big uh, kickoff event on Thursday at Resort World Casino. It's a big sponsor of ours. I love all you guys to come out, meet the filmmakers, and submissions open almost immediately after the festival. 10-day festival um, at the end of August. Submissions will open for next year. So come talk to me. I'll give you a flyer, and come out on uh, this, this week. Hi, I'm Qi Xing. I'm Shui. We're Fuzhou sisters. So we grew up in Fuzhou, which is a city in southeast China, and reunite in the States. And as you know, we have a lot of population in the New York City, Fuzhouese people. Um, so like we we've been heard a lot of story of like they um, their immigrant story, and also like they're struggling and their um, experience like living in a state without. Uh, without any support. So we're really looking for, and we are like trying to promote a culture and try to share Fujianese culture and also able to uh, connect people together to have this like shared memory experience celebrating together. Uh, and sorry about the time, um, very quick. Um, so we're actually looking for someone able to like join our as a journey to kind of document all the story we've been doing. Actually, one thing we've been doing is we start bringing a local Fujo wine at our apartment. And uh, we've been hosting a lot of uh, two uh, wine tasting in Chinatown, and we are just like trying to bring people together and share our like you know food culture. And um, 
and we um so later if anyone want to try some we have like cups and some fujoni snacks like we like to share when it's here about we'll, we'll think about the wine thank you The coolest. Okay, hi, my name is Eva, like from Wally. I run a company called Impact, where we create impact campaigns specifically focused on activating audiences to, audiences to take action. So instead of feeling like hopeless or lost about what to do afterwards, especially if it really emotionally resonated, um, we give them call to actions, measure impact metrics, and currently are working on a film called 36 Seconds Portrait of a Hate Crime. It's mm -hmm. having their virtual screening on Kinema, so if you want to watch that, go for it too. Yeah. Hi everyone. My name is April, and I'm a second generation Chinese American writer director. And my films explore whimsy, sensuality, and hidden socio political dynamics in everyday life. <laughs> And I'm working on a short film right now. It's an experimental satire called The United States of Mesmerica. And I'm looking for a production designer. It's about a goddess who's known in traditional Chinese myth as the Weaver Girl. And she weaves together the dreams of animals and humans into a moving tapestry of life on Earth with surreal consequences for a politically avoidant Chinese American office worker. Thanks. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Iran, and this is my first time in the A4 events. And uh, I don't have a specific personal projects, but I hear a lot of premier, uh, previous film projects in the previous pages. And I'm actually, a, I'm actually a, sound, a film sound designer, and I do um, sound design for films, post, post audio production, and location sound mixing as well. So if you need any help with sound, if you're looking for a sound person, please let me know. And I do sound for uh, films. Also, I do music, and I'm also interested in doing sound for interactive media as well. So please feel free to reach out to me, and uh, my contact in information is the very bottom one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Anybody else? This is your last chance. 30 seconds. No. Okay. Um, well, let's give yourselves all a great big hand here. Um, thank you to all. I can't, I'm amazed. Like, we're just, like, standing room only tonight. Um, Please, please, please take a second to fill out the survey. It's, I swear, it's so easy. Just like shoot the QR code. There's another one in the back if you need it, but we really, really appreciate it. Um, big thanks to Jose and to um, Fred and everybody here at Brick. Thanks to the amazing 8-4 team, um, as always. And thank you all for being here and sharing your work with us. And we can't wait to see you at our next town hall in two months. I think it'll be right back here. Um, I hope. Anyway, we'll keep you posted, so make sure you're on our mailing list.